Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Tuesday, February 6th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game is in 207 days. The game against Michigan in 298 days. When those games happen, uh, pretty recently, we thought Bill O'Brien will be the new offensive coordinator of Ohio State. And as of this moment, Bill O'Brien is still the new offensive coordinator at Ohio State. However, Bill O'Brien also a candidate for the Boston College head coaching job that was just vacated when Jeff Halfley jumped to the NFL. So we're going to be talking about a job opened by one former Ohio State assistant, could be taken by another for, uh, current Ohio State assistant, unless it's taken by one of a couple other former Ohio State assistants. Who knew Ohio State and Boston College were so closely tied here? Tony Gerderman, we're going to bring you in to break, try and break all of this down. So there have been a bunch of different reports on this. And at one point it was like imminent that there was a decision going to happen on Monday and a press conference on Tuesday. And that doesn't sound like it's going to happen. But Pete Thamel had a report on Monday afternoon that sort of laid out a little bit more of a structure for what this search is going to look like. Yeah. From what Pete Thamel said, there'll be uh, interviews on Tuesday with several candidates and perhaps interviews following that as well, maybe follow-ups. And then a decision sometime this weekend. So that's, uh, that seems to be a pretty accurate timeline. And I know people, Buckeye fans all over the place have been asking all of their people on all of their various sites, what's going on? What's going on? What, why aren't you reporting anything? Bo the people in Boston are saying this and people in Boston are saying that. Yeah. Like you said, like it's imminent. It could, hey, could be today. We'll see. And they've been saying that, um, for about a day or so now. And, you know, throughout this whole thing, you know, we, we we ask around and it's like nothing is, is imminent and nothing is definite. But the more this kind of lingers until there's like a definite, no, he's not going anywhere. You're kind of wondering, well, why, why are we still talking about this? And there's, there's, a, there's a reason. Yeah, there, there is a reason. And before we get to that reason, I do want to sort of touch on some of the stuff that we're hearing right now for, on our staff at BuckeyeHuddle.com. You know, as I said, there was a rumor that, boy, this this decision is imminent and the press conference can happen Tuesday. And then our buddy Ross Fulton uh, had some really interesting information on the on the uh, huddle board for our insider members on Monday morning, which at the time at least sort of backed everyone from DEFCON 1, maybe at least that back all the way back to DEFCON 2 on that. So you want to explain sort of what Ross had at that point to sort of get everyone at least like a half a step back off the ledge? Yeah, th the word was that. Bill Bryan was was in the morning meetings at Ohio State, and uh, the thought being that if if you're out the door, then you're you're out you're out the door. You're not you're not in the building, and so it, it seemed to follow that there wouldn't be any immediate announcement because uh, in terms of Boston College, because Bill O'Brien is still in Columbus. So the fact that he's still on hand at Ohio State, going through team meetings and things like that, staff meetings, lends one to believe that nothing has been decided. Or nothing is written in stone at this point, or written in ink. Like nothing has been signed. Nothing. Uh, there, there's still some things up in the air, clearly. And so, when you hear that, you're like, "Well, maybe there's a chance." So the chance and the decision, you know, if Boston College wants Bill O'Brien, I mean, it sounds like Bill O'Brien is at least strongly considering taking this, at the very least. And I think there's a lot of people who are looking at this and saying, why would you jump to Boston College? The Boston College job, they have not gotten above seven wins in the last, I think it was 12 or 13 seasons. And they have just very consistently hit their head on that ceiling. It was like six or seven times they won exactly seven games and three times they won exactly six games. And it's just like, that's sort of what that program is. And you're never going to get over that hurdle, at least based on the last decade or decade and a half or so of Boston College football. So. It's realistic to wonder, why would you do that when you could be the offensive coordinator for an Ohio State team that's one of the favorites for a national championship and potentially parlay that into a much bigger job, better job in one of the big two conferences instead of the ACC, which is a whole separate conversation. But Tony, there is a football decision here, but there's also a family decision here that people may not know about that is probably going to play a significant role in this decision if uh, Bill O'Brien does end up getting offered this job. Yeah, aside from the fact that Bill O'Brien is from Boston, his family is there, uh, is, is from there, is, and they've spent many years there, I think a total maybe of uh, six or seven years coaching at New England or in that area. Uh, but 
his, his son has serious health issues. And so um, the best care that they can get is in that Boston area. And so there is this opportunity now to be the head coach, presumed opportunity, at least you're, uh, um, an opportunity for an opportunity to be the head coach at Boston College, to be around the kind of care that uh, you would prefer for for your son and for your, your family to be there. Uh, so that aspect of it, while also being able to run your own program and not just be a coordinator, um, has some merit. I think he did a fantastic job at Penn State and turned that into a, a pretty good job at Houston, the Houston Texans. And so I think there's uh, certainly some, plenty of draw just outside of the football stuff, the family stuff, as you mentioned, the the opportunity for that care, that proximity, and to be around more, I think would be um, you know certainly something that you, you would have to consider. And, and Bill O'Brien, I don't know if we've actually said this out loud yet or not, but Bill O'Brien was the offensive coordinator for the New England Patriots. So his family has been living in that Boston area for a while. When Bill Belichick left, Bill O'Brien left. But there were some reports out of the Boston area that his family may be choosing to stay in Boston, even if he was going to Columbus, just to be able to stay there and have that. That was, you know, something that was reported by some of the Boston College cited folks uh, in terms of, you know, factors that are at play here. So then if your family is not moving and you can continue to live with your family, that obviously is a factor there as well. We have seen that over the years with head coaches, with families. You know, James Franklin has a child who had some health condi- health concerns, uh, and they were living separate from James Franklin during the whole COVID uh, pandemic uh, for health-related reasons. That's obviously a significant additional stress on your family. If you can avoid that, that is certainly understandable and probably outweighs the football uh, considerations, or certainly, you know, com- comes close to outweighing the football considerations there while you're making that kind of decision. But you know, this is not as of right this second, Bill O'Brien's decision to make because Boston College is still going through the interview process, as Pete Thamel reported. There are a couple uh, other candidates there. Uh, the the four the four that we have uh, sort of view sussed out as you know significant candidates that have been mentioned by notable sources out there. Uh, a couple of them with former Ohio State ties: Al Washington, who of course was the linebackers coach at Ohio State, defensive line coach at Notre Dame right now. Paul Rhodes, who was uh, the Iowa State coach quite a while ago, but who was a, a QC guy for Ohio State, quality control guy for Ohio State a couple of years ago, plus Jeff Munkin, the current Army coach, and Paul Christ, the former Wisconsin coach. I mean, that's a very interesting pool of candidates. And, you know, I don't know that all of those guys are officially getting interviews, but th- that's just a very interesting pool of candidates. You got some young guys, you got some old guys, you got some offensive guys, you got some defensive guys. It's, uh, you know, Al Washington, obviously, with ties to the program. So that, that's quite an interesting candidate pool. I don't know. Are there any conclusions to draw from that group and where Bill O'Brien fits in that group? You know, I wonder if they maybe are they trying to learn a lesson from the Jeff Halfley thing? Because you see some very uh, veteran and established head coaches on that list. Of course, the Al Washington thing, he played at Boston College. So that is why he would be involved there. But other than that, you've got guys who have been head coaches for a while, have run their own programs, wouldn't necessarily be learning on the job like Jeff Halfley, but also have been in college for a while and understand the college game and would certainly be willing to deal with the transitions of the college game. Unlike Jeff Halfley, who came to college and then everything changed, you know, every single year since he came to Ohio State in 2019. And he had been in college years before that, but like at least by this point, these established former head coaches that they're talking about have been around the game present day uh, in the past. They understand the changes. And I think they've been around long enough to understand the challenges at Boston College as well. And that's why I I think some of those guys would be okay with those challenges because they don't demand a national championship. So you're like, hey, this is pretty nice. If if I can just get these guys uh, seven, eight wins, you know, that's that's a nice living, make five million dollars a year to do that. No real pressure and nobody, nobody talking about you on the sports talk radio because nobody in Boston really cares about Boston College. So there's there's very little pressure, but it's also difficult to win there. It is definitely difficult to win there. And, you know, in case you're wondering what, you know, where this ranks on Boston sports, obviously you have the big four pro sports there. You also got MLS. You've also got uh, right now 
college football is not even the biggest college sports story in the Boston area right now. The Beanpot Tournament going on with uh, BC, BU, North, Northeastern, and Harvard. Uh, that is a big, uh, a big February event every year. So it's not even that Boston college football is way, way, way down the list. And yeah, I mean, if you're looking to have a little bit of a uh, turn the pressure down a little bit, that's probably not a bad place to do it. So we'll continue to follow this story and maybe we'll have a whole separate conversation about who, uh, who might replace Bill O'Brien if Bill O'Brien does jump from Ohio State to Boston college. We'll be tracking all of that stuff this week at BuckeyeHuddle.com. As I said, Ross has had some really good insider information on our board today, not, not even uh, discussing all of the stuff he shared. And uh, we'll continue to sort of follow that as that this whole coaching search sort of kind of keeps going on for Boston College and how it might impact Ohio State or uh, teams that Ohio State might face next year. We'll uh, keep track of all that for you at BuckeyeHuddle.com. There's also a whole bunch of uh, we're expecting to have uh, some interviews this week. Should have some uh, get, get, be able to give you a little more football talk this week as uh, and then signing day. There's all sorts of stuff coming up right now. Buckeye has been very active on the recruiting trail as well. Uh, if you did not listen to the Skull Session recruiting podcast that Tony and Mark did about the uh, just the latest in the five star cornerback uh, commitment pipeline for Tim Walton, uh, you can find that on the Buckeye Weekly podcast feed as a bonus episode, or of course on the Skull Session recruiting podcast feed. I would encourage you to subscribe to both of those. Both fine, fine shows. Uh, both just you can search Buckeye Huddle. You can find them both. Subscribe. Leave us a five star rating and review as well, which will help other folks find those shows. And uh, we'd appreciate that. So thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.